Hey, it's Mr. Be Mr. Bennett again with a, a second review video, and this time we are going to be looking at biochemistry. Uh, biochemistry is the study of chemistry in biology, um, and all of this is based on the element carbon. Uh, so if carbon is around, we're talking biochem. Um, organic compounds are all based on carbon. Um, carbon is unique in that it can form four covalent bonds, which means it can have a lot of different structures that can do a lot of different things. So we're going to look at the classes of biochemicals uh, and classify them really briefly. And again, this is meant to be a review, not a first time through. So if you're looking for the first time through, go back and look at some of the other videos. So we're going to start off with carbohydrates. We start off with carbohydrates. Carbohydrates um, are built with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only. Uh, so carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, in general, carbohydrates, they have a CH2O formula, some multiple of CH2O. So uh, there's more oxygen in carbohydrates than there is in something like a lipid, so you'll see that in just a minute. Um, for energy, carbs are quick. They're good quick energy, and glucose is our energy molecule of choice and that can be broken down, metabolized quickly to form ATP, and that can be used in your body uh, by your cells. Um, they can also be used for structure. So in plants, cellulose is a plant cell sugar uh, used in the cell wall, and it's very rigid, and so it's good for building um, these structures. Easy to build, um, easy to maintain. Um, carbohydrates can be linear or they can be rings. Uh, so a linear is just really a, a literal line of carbons with other atoms thrown in there. So a lot of oxygen, a lot of hydrogen, um, hydroxyl groups in particular. Uh, so this would be a six carbon sugar if you throw some oxygens in there. More typically in biology, we see them drawn as rings. Um, it's the same thing, different structure. Uh, so we've got a carbon ring here, right, with an oxygen at the peak, meaning there's a carbon up here, um, and a bunch of hydroxyl groups off the side. So this is a really, really ugly glucose. Um, but that's all it is. It's a lot of carbon, a lot of oxygen, and hydrogen fills in the gaps. Uh, because they're only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, they're called hydrocarbons. Uh, so when you see hydrocarbons, uh, you should be thinking about the, the carbohydrates. If we go over, we'll get a little bit more complex, but now we've got lipids. Um, again, our three main atoms are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Only this time, instead of having a CH2O, we have a much higher carbon to hydrogen ratio and a much lower carbon to oxygen ratio. Um, lipids form two classes of things. They are energy storage for the first part. Uh, so, And this is what we think of when we think lipids is kind of these triglycerides, right? So a three-carbon chain, three chain forms a glycerol molecule. This becomes the backbone. And then these guys, these squiggly lines, are the fatty acids that attach to that triglyceride. Your body uses these to store long-term energy, and they get metabolized into simple sugars um, as you need them. Fatty acids, they can be saturated. So remember, at each point is a carbon, and blank spaces are filled in with hydrogens. So this is a saturated fatty acid because there are all the hydrogens you could possibly have on there. This one up here, though, notice we've got a double bond. So this is an unsaturated fatty acid, and it gives a different shape. It kind of kicks that leg to the left because we are we had to remove two hydrogens here, one hydrogen here, and one hydrogen here, um, giving us a double bond. Um, on that molecule. So again, when you see long chains of stuff attached to a three carbon chain, triglyceride, it's a lipid. Lipids can also uh, be fused rings. Let me spin it this way so we can see it. And these, these are used for signaling. And this is what differentiates a carbohydrate ring from a lipid ring. These, we've got three six-sided rings right there and one five-sided ring. All signaling lipids, um, these are steroid molecules, have this general structure. So testosterone has got some different functional groups. Uh, estrogen has different functional groups, but they're all kind of this fused ring structure. So that's your clue then um, for, for identifying, is it a lipid or is it a carb? Are they fused rings or are they single rings for a carbohydrate? Let's come down to the bottom left now for a little diagram. And we've got nucleic acids. Uh, nucleic acids, so here are our constituent atoms. So we have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and I forgot one. Uh, I forgot my oxygen. So oxygen is also part of nucleic acids. Um, and these are storage for genetic information. So we're talking DNA, RNA. Uh, these are found in the nuclei of your cells um, or as uh, RNA in your cytoplasm for encoding proteins. Um, but nucleic acids all have this general shape. So we've got kind of four subunits to this. In the backbone, so let me get my pen. In the backbone over here, uh, this ring shape, right, a single unfused ring. This is a carbohydrate. It's a ribose. Uh, five carbon ring. If it's uh, DNA, you're talking deoxyribose, so we've knocked an oxygen off. If it's RNA, it's just a ribonucleic acid ribose. 
Uh, the P is a phosphate, phosphate functional group, and that's attached to the 5' prime and the 3' prime carbon, and they form little bridges, um, a phosphodiester bond in between the ribose uh, molecule. And then off of our backbone, we have a nitrogenous base. So this has got a nitrogen in it, and our bases are adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, and uracil in RNA, which replaces our thymine. And that's what gives you your base pairings. So A pairs with T, G pairs with C. Um, and the sequence of these things gives us our genetic code. So uh, three, um, three bases in a row is called a codon, and that codes for an amino acid, which then builds our proteins. And we're going to come back to our base pairing uh, when we do our molecular genetics review. So over here, the last class, we've got proteins. These are the most complex molecules just because of their size and shape. So proteins, because they're complex, they have a lot of atoms involved. So carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, all of these can be involved, um, and that's delineating for us. So if I see a nitrogen, I know I either have to be a protein or a nucleic acid because carbs and lipids, see, carbs, lipids don't include nitrogen. So we're very complex. There's four layers of structure. Uh, the first layer of structure is the amino acid sequence. Remember, all proteins are built with amino acids, and there's 20 of them. Um, and our genetic code gives us the 20. Uh, so the sequence of amino acids gives that protein its kind of base shape and base structure, um, just how these things are arranged from start to finish. Uh, the second layer, we have alpha helices, or alpha helix, and beta sheets. Uh, so if you remember, back to when we did this the first time, an alpha helix is a spiral, kind of like that shape. And a beta sheet is a little bit harder to draw. So if you imagine a piece of paper folded like a fan, something like that, they pleat. Um, and those form because of hydrogen bonds and other uh, small level interactions between the amino acids in the sequence. So if your amino acid sequence isn't right, you don't get your secondary structure correct and then the protein won't work. The third level is the three-dimensional structure of that unit. Uh, so as our helices are formed and our sheets are formed, we start to get more interaction. So more hydrogen bonding in between um, sulfur and oxygen and hydrogen. You also get van der Waals forces, things pushing against each other. There can be disulfide bridges where sulfurs are bonding together, all kinds of stuff. And it gives us a three-dimensional shape. A lot of proteins have multiple subunits. Uh, so hemoglobin is a subunit, uh, is a complex of four heme subunits. And so when those pair up together, that gives you your quaternary structure, the whole thing put together. A ribosome um, is RNA, so it doesn't fit this example. But a, uh, like I mentioned, hemoglobin, um, any enzyme typically has multiple subunits that are all functional in one way or another uh, to help that protein do its job. Remember, enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. Uh, also, pay attention to your endings. We've got other notes on that. But again, quick review, seven and a half minutes about uh, biochem. If you need more information, go back and find some of the older videos on the channel.